I'd like to talk to you all today about one hugely important decision which faces tens of thousands of students across the country every year when they each reach that point in their education, that crucial point where they get to make the decision about which subjects they're going to continue studying and, and those which they are not. Now, over the last 10 years or so, both my work here at the University of Essex and my work with the Further Mathematics Support Programme has given me the opportunity to, to visit lots of schools and to talk to students and teachers and, and have students and teachers visit us here on campus and, and engage in enrichment activities with them where we get the chance to, to show them some of the, the mathematics that goes on beyond the, the classroom and, and how some of this maths might be of relevance to, to the students. And so it's always quite sad whenever you, you hear someone utter the words, I was never any good at maths. And, and I think I think it's possibly because I, I do this kind of this kind of job. We're engaging with a lot of students. I've de developed a very fine ear for hearing this, and so it's, it's not just when I'm um, sort of at enrichment events, but if I hear it on the, the TV or on the radio or something, it always catches my attention as, as well, because that always signals to me sort of the, the sad fact that there's someone out there who hasn't seen the relevance for, for mathematics for, for them in their lives, and they just found it easier to disengage with the subject than to than to carry on working with it. Um, so you, you might wonder, sort of, why, why does it matter that, that someone would want to engage with, with mathematics or, or, or not? And, and I think that mathematics is something which is just so central to, to the world around us today that it is important that, that people do engage with it. Um, and before I give some examples of why, we can just look at the numbers, because it's not just me thinking that, that people are choosing not to engage, and, and me hearing this per perhaps a little bit more than the average person might. Um, if we actually look at the numbers of students who've chosen to continue studying mathematics in recent years, it's not perhaps quite where we'd like it to be. So if we go back um, just 10 years and, and look at the number of people who completed an A-level in mathematics 10 years ago, that number sits at just under 53,000 students. Now, 53,000 sounds like a, a pretty big number, and so we need to put this in some kind of context to, to be able to draw any conclusions from it. And if we look at the number of students who completed an A-level in English in the same year, and English was the most taken subject that year, then the number of students completing an A-level in English sat at just under 86,000 students. So we had a, a gap of about 33,000 students, or to put it another way, more than one and a half times the number of students completing an A-level in English versus the, the number of people completing an A-level in mathematics. Um, and you could very well ask, as I said, you know, why does, why does this matter? Students are completing, say, eight, nine, ten GCSEs maybe, and they're only going to go on and study three or four A-levels. And so they have to drop more than half of the subjects that they're studying. So why is it important whether mathematics is, is one of the subjects that they drop or one of the subjects that they continue? And as I said, mathematics is something which is just so integrated into so many things that we do and, and use in the world today. And it's something which perhaps students at school don't realize the importance of in the future for their, for their studies at university or for, their future, or for their future jobs. And I always find it a sad again when I've certainly spoken to, to students who um, have said that maths isn't something they want to carry on with and then go on to tell me of a, a job or a degree course they want to study where mathematics plays an, an integral role in it and, and even sadder perhaps when you speak to someone at university who had chosen not to carry on studying the subject only to later find that it was something that was essential to them and they then have to kind of play catch up and, and learn things which they had the opportunity to learn at school um, but, but opted not to. So it's important that the message is, is got out to students in a, in a clear way of the importance of the, the subject and of, and of why it's relevant to them. Now, obviously, students want to know why studying a particular subject matters, not just mathematics, but a variety of subjects. And I'm sure when they ask, why would I study this, or why does this matter to me in relation to maths, they hear the same kind of examples that I'm sure lots of us have heard in the past, things like, we need mathematics for computers, or we need mathematics to help us design aeroplanes or, or build buildings. And whilst these kind of things are absolutely true, maths does play a role in all of these things, it it's does so much more than that. And I can give some examples now of perhaps areas where, where people aren't aware that mathematics plays a role, some of them perhaps you have heard before, but, but for some examples, um, mathematics can be used by beekeepers to optimally place beehives throughout a field so that they can maximize the pollinization that the bees produce in that field, and so then it can increase the quality of the, the fruit that that field yields. Um, mathematics is used by millions of people every day when they're planning a journey from one place to another, and a computer algorithm can tell them the shortest or the fastest route between these two places. Um, and not only that, when they're carrying out this journey, again, it's mathematical algorithms that allow us to triangulate ourselves on the, on the face of the planet and know where we are in our journey so that we can receive up-to-date information about where we are. Um, mathematics allows, while we're making our journeys, it allows our mobile phones to seamlessly switch between mobile communication towers so that we can stay connected to the world around us. Um, and again, none of these things are possible without mathematics. It can be used by law enforcement in relation to data to where crimes have taken place to help them approximate where the perpetrator or perpetrators of those crimes um, 
may be. It can be found in things like music, where it tells us which notes and sounds go well together, and it can be found in the art of people like Escher. It can, it can be used to describe things from as, as vast as the orbits that the planets make in our solar system, down to things as small and intricate as the juggling patterns that, that entertainers make when they're throwing juggling balls or, or, or clubs in patterns. Um, and today, perhaps more than ever before, as a society, we're gathering vast amounts of data, and the tools and the language that we need to interpret and understand this data, in no small part, come in the form of mathematics and of statistics. So it really is important that students are aware of, of, the, of, of this when they're making their decisions about what they're going to study or not. And like I say, this isn't just from sort of my observations from, from talking to, to students and schools with my colleagues from the Further Mathematics Support Programme. It's um, conversations that I've seen reflected around the country. And in fact, other um, institutions have recently been writing reports on this. So in, in the last couple of years, we've seen reports from places like the, the British Academy, the Higher Education Academy, the Nuffield Foundation, the Institute of Physics, all citing the, the relevance of mathematics to a, a wide array of subjects and the importance of students continuing to study it beyond the point where they have um, the option of dropping it. So the only data I've really given you so far is from about 10 years ago, where we had sort of 53,000 students um, you know, lagging behind the studying mathematics, lagging behind the, the 86,000 of English. Well, what's happened in the last 10 years is that there's been a real upward trend in the number of people who've, who've chosen to carry on studying mathematics. It's been growing nicely. And by the time we get to the most recent data we have, the summer of last year, um, the 33,000 student gap had not only been closed, but it had been surpassed. It had, it, they were now just, just under... 89,000 students completing an A-level in mathematics, um, which made it the most taken subject in the country. And whilst I think this is fantastic news, that there are now more students with the mathematical skills they need before they go on to university, before they go on to the careers that they'll be looking at, at carrying out in the future, I don't think now's the time to, to sort of be, be pleased um, with, with what we've got and, and stop and allow that number just to, to peter out there. Because as I said, mathematics is embedded in so many things. There's a demand in the number of degree courses and, and, and jobs for there to be far more than just 89,000 students uh, studying the subject. I still talk to students at, at schools and at universities who haven't, stud who haven't continued studying mathematics when it would be something that is useful for them to do so. So the challenge that we face now is what can we do to keep this number growing um, so that we are having a, a group of people in the future sort of with the correct skills and tools that they need for their degrees and for their qualifications. And this is where I think universities can, can come in and play um, at least part of the role in, in continuing this growth to go forwards. Now, as I said, for the last 10 years or so, my work with the University of Essex and the Further Mathematics Support Program has led me to, to go out to lots of schools, and I've been involved in running lots of enrichment events, and, and whilst I've spoken at them myself, I've been lucky enough to see some truly inspirational speakers um, speaking at, at, at these events, where they're able to, some of them are, are of course mathematicians, but some are non-mathematicians, or people who certainly wouldn't identify as a, a mathematician, they come from other disciplines, but maths is integral to what they do on a day-to-day -day basis with their, with their subject or with their job and so I think it's such a powerful message when it comes from someone who perhaps you know I'm, I'm always supposed to, to say maths is fantastic and everyone should do it but from someone from a different academic background showing why the subject is or why mathematics is something which is essential for to allow them to fully engage with their subject and to allow them to therefore you know better sort of in, in, enrich their understanding of it and the world around us because Whenever I see this, it just makes me think I, I want more students to have the experience that I have of seeing these talks, of being exposed to these ideas, so that they're aware of the importance of the subject. Because I think if we could do that, um, this would be one large thing that could contribute to, to more students choosing mathematics as, as they move forward in their education, um, so that they arrive at universities more with the skills they need to engage with their degree courses, and so that they can then carry on into the workplace, again, sort of with the, the skills that they're going to need for, for jobs in the modern world. And it all comes back to this one point in their education where they have to make this decision about which subjects they're going to continue studying and those which they're not. And so I think it would be fantastic if in the future we can have more and more students making this decision based upon a position of knowledge about the importance of mathematics to them and to what they want to do in the future. Thank you very much.